Yo, this Innovate. Um, hope y'all enjoy the word. Um, wanted to thank everybody that rocked with me. Um, for real, for real, man. Especially about my god Norman, man. The one I rocked with the chest with. Um, bro, you never know how much a kind word can heal a person that tries to act tough. The loudest people are sometimes the most wounded people, bro. And 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 I'm a person dealing with the past. I'm dealing with depression. I've been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and post traumatic stress disorder. From the from the times I almost died in Detroit and from the stuff I saw and the stuff I did. And I can't take medication. Um, I've never taken medication. I've always let God do it. So right now I'm I'm actually on medicating. I was medicating myself with alcohol. Just medicating something that turned me into a monster. So I wanna just thank everybody. And not not only say that to confess, because I'm also given a word and I don't want to seem like a hypocrite. And I just pray that people understand that there is a dual nature to people, bro. There's a sinful nature and there's the saint nature, you know, and I just say part and self on that sinful nature, bro. And um, if people aren't willing to accept me as I am, that's cool. If you harbor so much anger towards me that you say I'm going to judge him for the way he was when he was drunk. I'm cool with that. I just um salute those that still rock with me as I am start giving these messages because the morning words is what helps me heal also. And what else? And this is what keeps me clean, the word of God. So I'm just sharing my purging process with y'all. I'll probably do this for a week, walk around in the morning and purge in his word like that. And that's how I um deliver myself. It takes about three days. I've been doing it for three days, too. And that's nothing to me. That's a lot, though. And um, I hope you all enjoyed the word I gave today. I love giving revelations, man. I'm going to give them whenever the spirit moves me to. Might give some right now. Why, let's give some beautiful ones. They just popping in my heart. I'm going to give you a deep one. But first, I'm going to give you this one. And this is why I like the lounge and the way um, Jules carries himself in the lounge. Because anybody can come in there. And if you come in the lounge and you try to ridicule someone or, or just try to um, be too dismissive towards them, Jules would be like, wait, give them a chance to speak. Give them a chance to listen. That's a Christ nature. That reminds me. That's a Christ nature. That's a nature of compassion. That's that's what Jesus did in, in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. When um when they came to arrest Christ, they came to arrest him. What did Peter do? Peter pulled out his sword. Bah! Cut the man's ear off. What did Jesus do? Put the man's ear back on. Jesus said, I want everybody to have a chance to hear me. Even him. Bah! Even my enemy. I want them to hear me. At least to give them that chance. Um, and I think that's beautiful. And we all got to grow after we hear him. Even Peter had to grow. If you really um, pay attention, um, Peter denied Jesus three times in the beginning of his ministry, right? This is another small little revelation. I do not know. I don't know him. Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. Way later on in Peter's life, this had to, and if you really do the sign, if you really do the, just dive into the Bible, this had to be at least over 14 years later, Peter was still doing the same thing because Paul had to check Peter and Paul gives a testimony of when he disappeared with God for about 14 years. So that was a long time when Paul was eating with Peter and with the Gentiles. And when the Jews came, Peter got ashamed of the Gentiles. Paul said, I had to check Peter. He said, you, he said, you eat like a Gentile, but when the Jews come, you want to act like a Jew because you was afraid of what they think of you. Peter still had to grow in that area. I've been with God over 20 years and I never thought I would be this person. If my pastor saw the way I act online, she would be like, well, you better get help. She don't realize I just let loose and I don't care. I can I can turn back to God on a dime. But the way I acted was just so extreme. But I've been with God for so long that I can just stop and I can just give him my faith back. I can pick up my cross again. I can lay that stuff at the altar. I can't force others to forget it. But I can lay it down at the altar myself and forgive myself. Now, oh, here's a beautiful revelation. I'm not going to yap on this one because I already did a morning word. I'm going to tell y'all something nobody in the world told us. And this is deep, bro. Do you know why John said, when John saw Jesus, he said, um, I am not, un he, the, he is, um, the one who you see came before me. John said, I am not even able to loose a strap of his sandal. Why did John say that? Research. Sometimes I can't even say do your own research. Forgive me for being cocky because everything I, most of the stuff I say is straight from the source, bro. So it's nothing you're going to ever hear in the world. So you can't even research. Oh, you can, you got to look in scripture to research. That's where you do your research. Why did John say 
I'm not worthy to loose the strap of his sandal. Now, mind you, the disciples, John's disciples were like, are you the Christ? John was like, no, he who was before me, I mean, he who was after me came before me. John said, I'm not able to loose a strap of his sandal. What was John saying? They understood what he said, and what he said was very beautiful. To understand it, you got to go to Ruth. You got to go to the Old Testament to understand what he meant by that. You got to go to Ruth chapter 4. And you got to read what Boaz did for Ruth and Naomi. Boaz was their kinsman and there was a king that owned them. There was a man that owned them, their property. And Boaz said, I want to redeem them. Boaz told the man, like, if you redeem their property, then you got to, if you redeem the people, you got to take the property. You're going to mar your inheritance, basically. Boaz did something. But the king, Boaz said, I will redeem them from you. So Boaz said, I will redeem these women. And what did Boaz do? He took off his shoe and he gave it to the man. And he said, now the people belong to me. And then the scripture says, because that was Jewish custom, God made point to say this after he did that. Ruth 4 said that was Jewish custom in those days to take off your shoe and give it to the person as a transfer of the inheritance. So John was telling him, people, you don't belong to me. You already belong to him. He redeemed you already. I can't even take his shoe. John didn't say I can't take his shoe. John said I can't even lose a strap on his shoe. I can't even act like I redeemed y'all. You belong to him, bro. Innovate, man. I love Jesus, bro. That's why the devil messed with me, man. I didn't act like that for nothing, bro. Gotta, I'm, you know, I'm different like that, but that was deep, Sean. Hold up. That's why John said that, B. Nobody in the world will tell you that's some beautiful stuff, bro. That's just, it, it makes the Bible so real when you see stuff like that. And when you look, you got to ask God, like, Father, show me the hidden manna. Make it real to me. Make the, if you got to look at the events of the Bible like they really happen. John's got people following him. Are you the Christ? John said, no, he is. I can't even lose his shoe. I can't redeem you from him. He before me. You already belong to him. That's the word of God. You belong to him already. He's not here to redeem you from me. You belong to him. And let's think of another beautiful one before I go. That's very beautiful to me, yo. Um, wow, I love that scripture. Let's dig into another beautiful one. Another one that I love. And it's the last one. Another one that I love is um the wedding supper. That just came in my heart. When the wedding supper of the Lamb. You know, Jesus was already doing miracles, bro. Before It says that was his first miracle. I'm sure that was his first recorded miracle that he did in front of the people. But when Jesus did that miracle, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't add to the word. I, I stay in the word. And the reason I say that wasn't his first miracle, because when he did it, read what his mother says. His mother said, whatever he tells you, do it. Facts. When they was getting that wine, Jesus' mother said, Whatever he tells you to do, do it. So she knew, like my son got power. What did Jesus do? It was six water pots. Six is the number of man. Six empty water pots. So that's our stone hearts. Six empty water pots. That represents a stone hearted human. Jesus said, fill him with water. That represents his spirit cleansing us. He said, draw some out and give it to the king. That represents the joy he has for changing us, for saving us. God's word, beautiful as fuck. Oh.